Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's episode we are going to be making a static camera viewing system of some sorts that you can find in uh, Resident Evil, old Resident Evil games and such. Uh, it basically is just a camera system with fixed positions. You can move into the other positions and continue the path like so. The thing that we are also going to be implementing is so that, when, as you can see here, you have this camera angle and when you change into this one, if you hold W, you will continue moving in the direction that you came from. You will not swap around and and uh, and uh, and use the new camera angle as the starting position. This changes when you press a button. So when you move in, if you hold down the button, it is going to stay moving forward in the direction that you came from. Uh, same with A and D and uh, etc. So A is going to go over here, and then I'm going to continue moving. And uh, as I said, when you press a button, so I'm going to press S now. And, uh, uh, well, that was a bad example, actually, because that would mean that I would continue going that way. So I'm going to press A when I come here. And that is moving me to the left. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it, what we're going to be doing. If you enjoy, please uh, let me know in the comments that you enjoyed. <laughs> I don't fucking know, dude. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a like if you found it helpful. Let us just get started right away. So I have a third person template here that's completely empty. I've only removed a couple of things in that world. Now what I'm going to do is I am just going to set up a little test area that we have for our cameras. And uh, you might as well follow along if you want to. Now the very first thing I'm going to do is just going to set up some changes to our third person character. By heading into our third person character, I'm going to disable the camera input because I don't want to be able to use the mouse to look around. And then I can click the camera boom, go over to use point control rotation, turn that off. And I'm also going to turn off everything else here. I can then make the target arm length up to 800 maybe. Head over to the viewport, press E to, s to select the rotate, and rotate it 40 degrees up. Now if I play, we have a character here that can walk around in a third person view only using WSD without any mouse control and a fixed camera uh, rotation. Inside my content draw now, I'm going to right click anywhere, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this one my camera system, and I can open that up. Inside of my camera system, I'm going to make a new blueprint class. I'm going to expand all classes and search for camera. And I'm going to want the camera actor. I'm going to call it my BP camera actor. I'm also going to right click, create a new blueprint class, select actor. And this is going to be my BP camera switch uh, collision box. I'm going to open up my BP camera switch and I'm going to open up my BP camera actor. Now my BP camera switch is going to want a variable. I'm going to call it my camera ref. It's going to be of type BP camera actor. I'm going to make it instance editable and expose some spawn. I'm also going to add a box collision like so. I'm going to in this search bar top right, I'm going to search for hidden and I'm going to turn off hidden in game. And that should be it for our camera box for now. We are going to add one event in the event graph later, but that's not yet. I'm going to head into my BP camera actor. And inside of my BP camera actor, I'm going to add a movement arrow. So a arrow, which I'm going to call movement arrow. This is going to dictate the way you want your controllers to be after you switch your camera. I'm going to set up the arrow color to be a green. The arrow size, I'm going to set it to so it distinguishes it from the other arrows in the world. And then I'm going to set up a variable. Variable is going to be called my movement arrow rot or rotator. Select the variable list and select rotator. I'm going to make it instance editable and exposed on spawn. That is our camera actor, and we have our switch collision box. Now we can go into our third person map. And let's place down our camera switch collision box. I'm going to place it down. I'm going to expand it to the size that I want it to be. So I want two cameras to be on this uh, plane here. Or this hallway rather. 
I'm going to have it like so and expand it out to the edges. Remove it off to the middle-ish and expand it out. I'm going to hold down Alt, drag it over here, make it a bit smaller so that it fits the parameters of our hallway. And then I'm going to do the same again, hold down Alt, press E to rotate 90 degrees, move it out into position. Could have another one there, I'm not gonna do that though. We're gonna close it up here. So I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna hold an E and Alt to rotate it. Move it like so and move it in. Now we have our camera collision boxes. Now I'm gonna place our camera actors. So my first camera actor is gonna be over here. Rotate it downwards, maybe like 30 and place it in the position I want it to be. I'm going to hold down Alt, move another camera over here. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees backwards, face the direction that I want. I'm going to fix this collision box before we continue. And move this camera, rotate it into position. Now you want to select your box collision and select your camera reference. Select your cameras that it coincides with, the, the correct camera I mean. And that is it for that. Now in our third person character, I'm going to set up a couple variables. I'm going to have a current camera ref, which is going to be a BP camera actor. I'm going to duplicate that, I'm going to call it new camera ref. I'm then going to make a new function. I'm going to call it change camera. And inside of change camera, I'm going to add an input. The input is going to be a BP camera actor. I'm going to call it camera ref. I'm going to set new camera ref to the incoming one. I'm then going to right click and get player controller out from this I'm going to drag it and say set view target with blend the view target I want to set it to is the new camera ref and once that is set I can return that is going to change our cameras we're still going to have some issues with our key movements so when you change this the key movements is still going to be the same uh, so, so if you hold them up and then you go to from this one to this one, it's going to fall back to that one again because the camera changes. So let's go into a third person again. I'm going to remove the control rotation of these two. And then I'm going to get my current camera ref. I'm going to get the movement arrow that we set up. And then out of that, I'm going to get ro rotation. I'm right click, split, and then plug in the corresponding one. So X and Z. Copy this over and then just to see on the other one. We are still going to have the same issue that I was talking about before though. So we are going to set up a custom event here. And it's going to be called our cam switch key event. On cam switch key event, I'm going to check if current camera ref is not equal to the new camera ref into a branch. If that is true, we're going to set current camera ref to the new camera ref. We do a branch here because we're going to do a any key event. So any uh, any key. And on every key press, we are going to check if we have a new camera ref. So cam switch key event. And that should be it. Now, th that is actually not true. That is not it. On our cam switch collision box, select your box going to add a on begin overlap event cast to your third person character and then call your cam switch uh, switch uh, change camera event. the camera is the camera ref of our collision box now for this I'm just gonna place my character above here 
uh, otherwise you would want to implement maybe a start check on your character or something on begin play to check overlapping events. If I now play, it is going to fall me down. I am now on the current camera here. If I now press forward, it's going to continue going forward until I release or select a new key. And same with here. So it's going to always continue moving in the direction that you wanted it to from the start. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this quick little video, please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.